Well, by now, the most common question it seems like I get asked is regarding denoising and uh, sharpening software for the raw files. Um, back in the last few years, I've done a lot of testing about what is actually the best denoiser. And then, of course, Lightroom just a couple of years ago released a much improved denoise for within Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, uh, as well as Photoshop and Adobe Camera Raw. And then Photoshop even has capabilities now to do third party denoise as well. Um, so, with that being said, a lot of people are wondering if these third-party software are actually worth it, if they're better than Lightroom, or if they're just simply not worth it. And in today's video, that's what I want to talk about a little bit. I'm going to be showing you what I think after doing much, much testing between different um, brand of software, I think the absolute best option for denoising your photos, whether it be Astro, Wildlife, Landscapes, Portraits, anything else, it is definitely uh, DxO Pure Raw 5. And so I'm going to talk about if I think that software is worth it when it comes to stacking up with Lightroom and if it's something that you should invest in this software, because obviously if you already use Lightroom, um, even though it does cost money, it's not an additional cost on top to buy that other software. So is it actually worth buying? So let's jump right in there and let's just compare the two. We're going to compare both results and then how they work. Um, right now I'm here in Lightroom Classic and I'll just show you on this photo here. Um, when you want to use Lightroom's denoise, you go down to develop, scroll down, and then you just check this denoise box. On my computer it takes about 20-ish seconds, but it does a pretty nice job. Then when you zoom in, you can toggle the eyeball, you can increase the denoise or decrease the denoise if it's doing too much or too little. You know, somewhere about in there probably looks good. Now it denoises and it checks this raw details box, which sharpens a little bit. So you can see like if I zoom in right on the antlers of this moose, you know, it's added a little bit of sharpness there, which kind of looks realistic, kind of not. It's kind of up to your opinion. Now, when we talk about DxO Pure Raw 5, um, it operates a little bit differently. This is really just meant for sharpening, denoising, fixing other optical issues with your photos. It doesn't do all this other editing. So you're going to use these both together if you are going to use this. So within Pure Raw 5 here, you simply just drag and drop your raw files and you can click process with preview. That loads you in real nicely here. Now you can scroll in to your image and you get this slider that shows the before and after. Um, typically, I don't use these three options, the vignetting, chromatic aberration, or lens distortion, but you definitely can if you want to do those here as well. Um, and then you can you know, just toggle this to see exactly how it is sharpening the photo. Of course, you want to be on like a highly detailed spot in the image somewhere like in here on the face looks good. Now, the nice thing that you have, you have a little bit more control here. You don't have to use it. You can just use a preset and send it through. But if you want that extra control, you do have it here. So you have this luminance, which is essentially how strong the denoise is going to be. But then you also have force details. Usually I leave the force details all the way at the top. Uh, the luminance I'll adjust until I feel like it is just about right. And then you have these optical corrections for lens sharpness optimization. Now, this is really nice because you can see before and after. So this gives it just a little bit of sharpness on top. Maybe I'll zoom in here. Make sure you're watching this in 4K if you have the internet connection for it before. This is with no lens sharpness, and this is with the lens sharpness. Now, you can bring this down if you felt like it was a little bit overcooked, um, but that is super, super easy to do. Now, additionally, if you were editing a whole batch of photos, you could go in here, fine tune this, and then you can save this as a preset. And then when you go back to your light box, select all the photos and then process them all at once. And then you could reload them into Lightroom. So that's all great. That does add an extra step though. So you're probably wondering, is it really worth it or is Lightroom just good enough? So let's compare some images here. I've got two wildlife images. I've got a landscape image, and then I've got some astro images. And I'm going to talk about each of those there. So we're just comparing them here in Lightroom. Um, you can see I just reloaded the, this is the deep prime. Uh, you can see it right over, I can't show you with the mouse, but over there you can see this is the deep prime XD2S um, module there that I used in order to denoise this. So let's compare. Um, we're going to show the Lightroom image on the left and the DxO on the right. Obviously zoomed out here, can't see much, but we will just zoom in 
and you can see the difference. So the DxO version is a lot sharper, which is what I like. Now, when, when we're talking about noise reduction, we're not really worried about how much noise it reduces because there's plenty of software that can reduce as much noise as you want. What we're really mostly worried about is that it keeps the image looking realistic because we don't want it to look plasticky and AI generated. We want it to stay looking realistic while removing the noise while keeping some details. Um, so that's what we're looking at here. You can see just how much more detail the moose on the right, which is done by DxO, has compared to Lightroom. There's no way to like increase the sharpness of this when you use the denoise in Lightroom, but you can see so much sharper on that DxO image. You can actually see the hairs here. Here they're kind of blurry. Um, so that looks a lot better on the first wildlife image. Now let's move to the second photo. Uh, one thing that I might do here, just quickly go into develop and I might just increase the exposure. Let's just increase it one stop. That'll allow us to see the detail and the noise a little bit better. And now we'll go in here, select both. We've got, again, Lightroom on the left, DxO on the right. We'll zoom in. This image was already a little bit blurry and not a lot of details to begin with, but you can see the DxO is looking a little bit better on this one as well. We'll maybe zoom in just a little bit more. The DxO is just picking up a little more detail. You can see that eye looks a little bit better. Uh, and then when it comes to the background, you know, they're both going to be pretty comparable. Um, but I do think the DxO has just a little bit more detail there. So it does make a little bit of a difference. Um, you can see the colors are a lot better here with some detail. This is kind of just flat and blue in there. So I'm not really liking that too much. Um, let's go back. We'll look at the landscape now. Again, compare. And again, zoom in. Now this one I shot at a higher ISO to keep the leaves sharp. Now one thing that you'll notice here on the Lightroom version is the leaves are not that sharp because there's no additional sharpening like there is in DxO. So as I zoom in and scroll around here, look how much sharper the leaves are on the right. That's just using that sharpness optimization, the lens sharpness optimization. I think it was at about 150 here. And so it's looking so, so much better in that right side photo um, from DxO. Uh, now, again, is the difference is negligible when you're zoomed out this far, but when you zoom in, so if you're printing, cropping, anything like that, you are going to notice that DxO difference there. Uh, however, I think one of the biggest differences is actually in Astro. So let's look at our two Astro images here. One thing that you will notice, the left side here, the Lightroom version, I almost, it's like little fireflies coming through the sky. It's like trying to add these details that aren't actually there. And it does not look good right in here where my mouse is at. That just doesn't look good. You've got it's literally like little fireflies flying around that were accentuated on the right side looks so much better from DxO there. And I think you're going to see the same results here on this last image. It's a little bit of the same. Yeah, you can see again, this Lightroom version, all these little fireflies, DxO is looking so, so much better. So another thing that a lot of people will ask about is, you know, this Lightroom is nice because it's technically non-destructive. You can go back and edit it, but what about DxO? Now, DxO just released uh, a brand new update. I believe it is the Pure Raw 5.5, I believe. Uh, and that update allows you to save your image into Photoshop as a smart object. So, you know, you do your or correction and you open directly as a smart object in Photoshop, which does make it so that it's non-destructive, really, really nice workflow and a nice feature to add. So that's kind of my two cents there. I do think DxO is well worth it if you're a pixel peeper. Obviously Lightroom is good. DxO is better though. Um, and I am someone who wants the absolute best for my images because I like to print, I like to zoom in, I like to crop, and I want everything to look absolutely tack sharp as possible with as little noise and the, light, the least amount of plasticky feeling as I can. Um, the other benefit, if you're watching this right now, DxO is doing a sale going on right now um, for Black Friday. And so that's why I'm releasing this video right now. You can use my affiliate code on top of that sale to get a little bit deeper of a discount on Pure Raw 5. I do think Pure Raw 5 is a great piece of software. I have a longer review video that I'll link here for Pure Raw 5 that you can check out. But otherwise, that is kind of my two cents on Lightroom Classic Denoise versus the DxO Pure Raw 5 Denoise. Uh, if you guys have any questions, questions, you want to see more images, anything like that, let me know down below in the comments. Otherwise, I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in, guys. My name's Austin Jackson, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.